shape you to be a son and a daughter of destiny. Praise God. All right, okay, Psalm number what? 33. Is it 30? Yeah, 33. 34, I'm sorry. 34, verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Now, I didn't say you awake and come to church and praise the Lord. But wherever you are, you make sure that, <laughs> hallelujah, you sing the songs of Zion. Keep your spirit high. Keep your spirit fueled with the presence of God. Bring God's culture and God's glory into your life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Some of the good old hymns have the ability to bring us into the presence of God. Some of these new songs, sometimes I don't even know what they are saying. But saying something meaningful to the Lord. Making melody in your heart. Amen. Lift your spirit up and keep the glory of God floating and working in your members. Because you contain his glory and you must connect with the glory. Praise God. Now we read 34. Now come back to 33. Psalm 33, 1 to 3. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous. For praise is comely for the upright. It is a requirement of the upright person to praise the Lord. That's what it says. Praise the Lord with the harp. Sing unto him with sultry, an instrument of ten strings. Sing unto him a new song. Praise skillfully with a loud noise. Many, many years ago, we had opportunity to be led by a lady who knew the glory of God. Who knew the Shekinah glory. I've often told you about her. And she would take a tambourine and tie her wrapper to her waist. And she would begin to lift up the songs of Zion. She would sing into the wee hours of the morning. Everybody will be perspiring. Everybody will be sweating. And then different kinds of tongues and diverse kinds of tongues will begin to flow. And in the midst of that, prophetic messages will begin to flow forth. And people were given direction. People were spoken to. People were directed in the midst of the glory of the Lord. Amen. If you are missing out on what must I do in the earth, why am I here? Connect with the glory of God. I said connect with the glory of God. There is a voice in the midst of the glory of God being revealed in the assembly of God. And when the voice of the Lord comes, the Bible says it will break even the cedars of Lebanon. The cedars of Lebanon are like a fortress. They are not easily broken into. But here God says that the voice of the Lord God and his glory, it breaks the cedars of Lebanon. May God break every cedar, any, any, any oak tree that stands your way. May the glory of God level it in his power and in his name. Amen. When you face resistance, you face resistance in the spirit. And you see people's nasty attitudes surface. And you pick it up in the spirit. Don't pay attention to it. Go beyond it. And see that there is glory of God beyond the nastiness. Praise the Lord. You don't have to, you don't have to, you know, this, you know, say monkey is monkey does. Don't do monkey business. Trash is trash does. Don't get in the arena of being equal with people in their nastiness. Somebody has the affront that as a child of God, they can walk with bitterness in their heart. 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, you get down to pray. You are outside of the glory. I want you to understand that when you are not walking in the love of God and in the joy of God, forget the glory. Because the glory of God does not entertain bitterness. Bitterness dries up the glory of God. But when men decide they want God's glory, they must first be united to the body of the Lord. They must forgive everybody. They must let loose everybody inside. They must allow people to go. Praise the Lord. Amen. No open strings. You must cut the open strings. You must let people go. Hallelujah. Just as in Christ said, you have been forgiven much, so forgive ye. You walk in divine love. Somebody, you offend somebody, you don't become big and, and arrogant and try and give your side of the story. You have no side. Your side is, I'm sorry. That's your side. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can I rub that in? Yeah, I don't have a side. Your side is, I'm just sorry. Amen. That word, sorry and thank you, these two words are the most powerful words that should come out of a believer's life. For the light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Hello, I'm Dr. Saki. 
I'm head pastor of Fresh Fire Worldwide Ministries, where we are building one life at a time with the love and the power of Jesus Christ. I want to invite you to come this Sunday in our victory service to celebrate with us the power of the risen Lord. You will never regret coming in our midst. God's word will come to you in power and there will be great demonstration of the Spirit's gifts and power in our midst. I want to see you this Sunday at 2929 Gallows Road at the third floor, Falls Church in Virginia. If you need further information, please call the number you see on your screen, 703-289-9998. God bless you and see you soon. Thank you and I'm sorry. It shouldn't be hard to say you are sorry. But if you want to insist, 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 then the glory of God cannot be manifested. And when the glory is not manifested, a lot of problems will occur. Psalm 149 and verse 6. Psalm 149 and verse 6. The while some of this, let me talk very quickly, especially to couples, married couples, especially when the other side does something to you and you don't let go. And then you come to church and say, shall we pray? You lift your voice and shut up, shut up, shut up, la, 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 la. you are lying to yourself. I say you are lying to yourself. Because you are disjointed, you are disconnected. When you are disconnected, God cannot hear your prayer. Come on, amen. amen. Forgiveness is essential. You forgive for selfish reasons. As um, I must wrote that. You must say that. You must forgive for you, not for them. You are doing yourself a favor to forgive. It's not so much for them as it's for you. Because you disallow an individual to control your emotions when you forgive them. And you let God rule and have the last say so of your life. Psalm 149 verse 6. 149 verse 6. Let the high praises of God be in our mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Let the high praises of God be in your be upon your lips. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two edged sword in their hand. Now David wrote about three quarters of the Psalms. He brought God's glory to the scene. When he once quoted as the deer pants for the water, so my soul long after thee. No wonder God called him the psalmist of Israel and called him a friend. God called him a man after his own heart. He was a praiser and a worshiper of Jehovah. He knew the importance of the glory of God. When the Ark of Covenant was in the house of Obedidom, David fought hard to bring back the, the, the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem. The glory of God meant everything to him. And the glory of God must mean everything to you. Amen. Solomon brought down the glory of God after building the temple for the Lord. I'm just going to share three things with you that the glory of God will do for you. Number one, the glory of God will settle every matter in your life. I said the glory of God will settle every matter in your life. Because God's glory is God's opinion. When sickness comes and the glory appears, the glory speaks in light of what is present. It doesn't say that there is no disease in your body. I've heard a lot of people say, well, you know, I don't have a headache. You know, because if I say I have a headache, then it means that I'm not operating in faith. If you have a headache, admittedly you have a 